Hello everybody, it's Dr. Rick here dropping in on you. Hope everybody is having an unbelievable start to your week. No matter what it is you're doing, I'm wish, wishing you the best. Um, I, I posted something earlier and this is where I'm sort of at right now. Uh, the last couple of years for me have been challenging, heartbreaking, amazing, remarkable, um, and I'm at a place right now where I'm grateful. Uh, not everything is where I want it to be, but I see so many things happening in my life that I fought so hard for. Uh, and I choose gratitude over complaining, over whining, over finger pointing, over all of that. Now I choose love, I choose gratitude, I choose to walk in my purpose and be the best version of myself that I can possibly be every day. And that's what I'm going to center and focus on. My goal is to uh, close this year out uh, on an unbelievable note. Um, I set out to do some extraordinary things this year. Uh, some of those things I've definitely got done. Others are lined up to fall into place. Um, others I'm still in pursuit of and you know some things uh, definitely didn't go the way that I would have wanted them to go uh, but I trust God uh, and sometimes that's what you have to do you have to trust a power greater, greater than yourself you have to trust a knowledge more uh, expanded and aware of what's going on around you than you have and you have to believe that if you keep walking in your purpose, if you keep living at the level of your design, that things will line up for you and your destiny will be fulfilled. Uh, that's what I want to place on your heart today. Uh, before I get started and the uh, thing that I really need to talk to you guys about, which is so important, I want to remind you that the Odyssey Project is in the middle of a fundraiser, especially for our programs like Black Men Lead and other programs that deal with the preparation of our youth, the protection of our youth, the empowerment of our youth, the cultivating of our youth. And it's so important. It's been a passion of mine. I've been talking about this since book one, which was the invisible father reversing the curse of a fatherless generation. And, and now I'm on book 25 and we're still in, in, the, in the thrust of this. I've been doing it long before I wrote the first book, but here, here, here's the thing. We need your support. I'm going to move on from that. But go in the description box, click the link, show some love. If you've been around, you know that I've been around. If you follow me, you know I've been around for a long time. This isn't new. I'm not somebody that just jumped out in a space and started making noise. I have been a major contributor uh, to solutions and possibilities and programs for the black community of all ages and all uh, all groups. With that being said, let's talk. Look, uh, when this thing with uh, Tiffany Haddish and Ari Spears first came out about being sued uh, by two siblings who I'm assuming now are adults that when they were younger uh, were uh, molested by these two uh, and groomed by these two while supposedly doing a comedy skit that was recorded. Uh, now, a comedy skit on pedophilia, uh, you're never going to convince me of that. You're never going to tell me there's a way to make that okay. You're never going to tell me that making something so devastating, something so traumatic uh, be funny and comedic in, in any way there's a time to speak on it you can use your platform that you've created through comedy but you speak on it with severity and seriousness you speak on it with a definite intention of uh, speaking out against it and calling it for what it is because we're in a moment at a time where people are trying to say it's okay we're in a moment at a time especially if you are a part of Hollywood where so many things go down that are so off course of what we should be striving for as a people you have to be aware of what your responsibilities are also with my wife still my wife my wife being molested as a child, being raped as a minor, um, 
and understanding the devastation and the pain that she endured, I really have a problem with it. Um, not that I didn't have a problem before I met her. I had, this is just like, you know, pedophilia and the febophilia is a major issue we don't like talking about in the black community. We want to pretend that all of a sudden it, it became an issue with R. Kelly and now it's an issue with Tiffany Haddish and Iris Spears. No, it's been an issue in the community. That's been Uncle Jerry and, 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 and all of these others who we see at the, the family reunion and we keep the kids away from because we know what they do and yet they're still a part of the family, still participating and still in some way, some form, some shape protected. Uh, listen, I'm not big on cancel culture. I'm not big on seeing somebody make a mistake and going out there and taking away their livelihood. Uh, I believe that people make mistakes, but I don't think one mistake that we can allow is the exploitation and traumatization of our youth. I think that is a deal breaker. I think it, when you feel like it's okay to do something of that nature, and the reason that I'm bringing it back up is that I have had my desk flooded for the last couple of weeks after I did the video. Every, and, and like uh, those of you, those of you who know me know I won't watch videos where children are being exploited, where children are being uh, harmed and treated in that manner. Uh, not even for evidence or to find out what happened. So I, I haven't seen it. But what I've got are some people I respect uh, immensely coming to me and telling me that it's worse than. Uh, I probably knew in that it's worse than what they initially thought because they've looked. And so um, I'm here again because people are going to, because everything is about the bag. Everything is about money. Everything is about money can fix everything. No, money doesn't fix everything. Money provide, Money is a means. How you use money can get a lot of things done. Yes, money is a resource. And with the proper resources, a lot of good can be done to help people heal and overcome things like this. But let me tell you something. Prevention is the best the best route. And here, here's the thing. Because these two siblings are probably going to recoup some sort of financial uh, compensation uh, for their pain and suffering and for what they have went through. A lot of people are going to say justice is served. No, justice is served. You don't get to violate somebody and then give them some money and say everything is good. Uh, and I think, again, uh, like I said, I'm not one who is big on cancel culture. I believe people make mistakes, but I believe there are certain things that you got to sit up and say, you know what? You need to sit down for a while. You need to go somewhere and sit down for a while. And I don't know what that while is. Uh, I, I, I don't, you know, I, I, I believe a person needs to eat and make a living. And if that's how they make their living, uh, I don't know. I'm not. But what I'm saying is, you know, right now we don't want to see you. Right now we don't want to see you in no movies. We don't want to see you on no stage. Right now we can't look at you. Right now we're disgusted with you. I think that if we would have did that with R. Kelly a long time ago, maybe he wouldn't be sitting on 30 years right now. But we have a tendency, number one, to become uh, enfranchised and uh, consumed with celebrity to the point that we live our lives vicariously through these celebrities. And we defend them because they represent what we would love to have, uh, fame and fortune, uh, but we don't understand at what price. Uh, I'm not gonna get into all of the possibilities of what actually went on when they shot that and why they actually shot that because I can't think of anybody being in their right mind choosing with no uh, type of incentive or being pushed into it to put children in a situation like that. Again, I haven't seen it, but I've heard enough about it to understand that it wasn't good. I've actually had several people tell me they were so uncomfortable they couldn't finish watching it. Now, that tells me a lot. That tells me, obviously, there are some things here. And again, what are we going to do as a people? How are we going to respond as a people? Uh, how are we going to come together? One of the things that I'm really concerned about 
uh, when it comes to my people is how disconnected we are, how individualized we are, how we have gotten to a point to where if it's not bothering me, no big deal. We have lost our sense of connectivity, uh, our sense of belonging. We have been we have been seeking and searching acceptance from them for so long that we've alienated our own spaces and we are not even concerned with what's going on. It's just about getting to whatever they say is the thing we're supposed to have. We're chasing the American dream. We're chasing fame and fortune. We're chasing so much uh, um, crazy stuff uh, that it is leading to us being lost and when you're lost you're easily misdirected you're easily misguided you're easily mishandled because your pursuit of things have you out of position and when you're out of position you don't have the firm footing you don't have the anchoring and the stability that's necessary to push through difficult moments so you're, you're caught off guard by some things that shouldn't actually have that big of an impact on you but because you're out of place it knocks you it knocks you further off place or it knocks you down and now it takes longer to recover it takes longer to find your bearings it takes longer we need to rediscover ourselves we need to search beyond what they're telling us we should be i'm so sick and tired of watching my people pursue the eurocentric idea the eurocentric idea of what's classy, what's perfect, what's beautiful, um, what's professional. Uh, everything is checking one another because we don't look how they say we should look. Checking one another because our hair doesn't line up with what their standards say it should be in the workplace. Daring and commanding one another that we should be in a certain place and looking a certain way and talking a certain way and behaving a certain way and we don't even realize that we are outside of our power source our powers our identity is everything the biggest fear that the system has is that we're going to discover who we are so how do man do you realize how devastating what happened to those children are we talk all the time about the children of the future that's why uh you know i call it out every chance i get because it's crap you know why it's crap because we have ways of helping our children empowering our children and nobody's behind it nobody's getting behind it nobody's funding it nobody's doing anything but the children of well let me tell you how devastating this is there's these things we call aces adverse childhood experiences now these children just in and of themselves let's first of all isolate them just in and of themselves what they went through has increased their chances of having long-term physiological health implications. Forget the emotional and psychological damage that's been done and what needs to be done to correct that. We now know through understanding epigenetics and understanding the physiological connection to trauma that they're gonna be more likely to attempt suicide. They're gonna be uh, more likely to uh, develop ischemic heart disease, the number one killer in the world. It's gonna be more likely to develop uh, autoimmune uh, diseases like lupus uh, and, and and it goes on and on type 2 diabetes obesity all these things increase because of the adverse childhood experience and the more points the more different adverse childhood experiences you get the higher these proclivities to experience these uh, physiological anom anomalies become to the point that we have a group or a generation that is no longer an anomaly anomaly it is likely and so that's a problem. And that's just in the sense of their own lives, what they're going to have to face and what they're going to have to go through. Now, you talk about the greater scope of the connectivity and the interconnectivity of who they are as black youth and the generation that they're growing up into and the disconnection that's created. And you look across the board and it's more children like that that are going through it, probably just not by somebody you know the name of 
uh, that you recognize the face of, but they're still dealing with it. And now you have a disconnectivity, you have a hostility, you have a heightened level of self-hatred as, as if we don't already have enough self-hatred. You have a lostness and a, a lack of understanding of who they are, why they are powerful, why they are uh, uh, potent and all they know is they don't feel like they belong like they've been alienated like they've been abandoned like they've been left this stuff carries into the 40s and the 50s this devastation has got to stop we have got to protect our children we need to start obviously in the home but it can't just be in the home. We need to be protecting the future. You can't keep saying the children are the future and leaving them exposed. Again, I think that both people involved in this and anybody else that we find out had something to do with it need to be held accountable. You know, I think that there should be a set state of you found you found doing this with a kid five years we ain't got nothing to do with you or depending on whatever five ten years whatever but i mean there has to be uh, a level of accountability when you're harming children and i'm also that way about women you harming women i have no respect for you um so that needs to be accountability i mean and if you are literally physically harming your children uh to, I mean, you, you probably need to be touched, honestly. And I don't mean touched in a nice way. I mean hurt. You're hurting kids. You don't deserve protection. You don't deserve it. You, there has to be a code of conduct that says if you harm women, children, and the elderly, that there's a consequence that is in direct correspondence to the action to the violation, to the encroachment. I don't believe that it should be acceptable. And, and, and people say, well, I, I, I don't condone it. Silence is condemnation. There's a thing called silent condemnation uh, in, in, in psychology. It, it says that I condone it by my silence because I haven't spoken out against it, because I haven't moved against it in a very decisive manner. I have silently or subliminally given my permission for it to take place that's the thing that we need to be looking at that's the thing i don't want it to ever be said that doc was okay with the exploitation and molestation of youth hell no because i probably have a case if i catch you But we're so isolated, we're so independently engaged in what's going on in our lives that we see stuff and we keep it moving. Everybody, I, I ain't my business. You know, and I get it, man. Right now, you get in the wrong person's business, it could be it. But let me tell you, that's got to be something you're willing to die for. Or life ain't worth living. I believe it was Dr. King. Matter of fact, I know it was Dr. King that says that a man that does not have something for which he is willing to live is, I mean, for which he is willing to die isn't fit to live. And I don't think life is fit to live. I don't think life is worth living if you don't have something you're willing to die for. That's what makes life precious. Is there something that will take you to a point that you will lay it all down to stand on it? And if you don't have that something, I stand on the love for my family. I will die protecting them. I will die defending them. I stand on the love of protecting black kids and black women. You got to have something to die for. You got to have something. You know, I'm not perfect. Never have been. There's never been a point in my time, my life, a point time in my life where I was perfect, where I had it all together, where I knew everything, where th there have been some times where life was sweet, things were great. If I touched it, it turned to gold. But never have I been perfect, I've made mistakes. But one thing that I've tried my very best to do 
is exhibit manhood in a way of being a protector. Getting between danger and those who aren't able to defend themselves. I have done it numerous times in numerous ways and that's the way that I'm going to live my life. It's got to be something you stand on. It's got to be something you stand on. And to me, when I talk about love, everybody says love and they think about romance. Everybody talks about love and they think of, ooh, ah, and ah. When I talk about love, I think about what am I willing to sacrifice? At what level of benevolence am I willing to give in to something? At what point am I willing to die to myself in order to ensure someone else is in a better place. I'm still growing in that area, but that's where I'm at. I'm at a place where if I say I love something, then I've got to be willing to give it all for it or I don't really love it. You know, we dance with that word. We play with that word. We throw it out there far too easily and we don't embrace the true uh, meaning of it. We don't understand the bro the broadness that uh, 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 of the things it touches, uh, the broadness of its reach and the things it touches and all that it encompasses. We, we don't do that, but I'm telling you something now. If we don't learn to love ourselves by way of loving one another, that we're just gonna consistently make it easy for them to do what they've been doing to us, but just on a grander scale. On that note, look, I'm going to get out of here. I didn't plan on going this long, but we actually are going to have to speak up and speak out on this issue and all others. As I get ready to get off here, as I've said uh, at the beginning and as I say every day, we need your support. So if you believe in the work we're doing, if you believe for what we stand in, if you believe, for, you believe in the fight that we are waging right now for our people, Go into the description box, click the link, and give. If you want to give via Cash App, that information is in there as well. Uh, but whatever happens, it's time to make a stand. It's time to do things differently. That's my challenge to you. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have an unbelievable remainder.